Deep within a bleak and dismal swamp hidden beneath its murky waters lies the headquarters of the most sinister villains of all time, the Legion of Doom. The podcast will come to order. The purpose of the podcast is to align our powers against the forces of good and defeat them, leaving us the rulers of the world. The five most villainous people on Earth, the nefarious Conor McGraw, the sinister Alan Muir, the wicked Arlen Harrow, the frigid hunter Davenport, and not to mention the brilliant leadership of myself, Chris Smith. Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> what did everybody think of Supergirl this week? Any uh, general thoughts to open up with? I think um, I really liked Metallo. I, yeah. Like, um, I think what they're doing is super interesting it's not yeah. it's out of all the dc shows i think this is like my second favorite next to flash and then legends tomorrow is kind of the third yeah but um it's definitely uh really good yeah i, I really liked metallo um i thought this episode was really strong i thought they really um they just did so many things right, from the action to the uh, to the writing. Uh, just everything about this episode really worked well, um, and there was a lot of promise in last week's episode, and a lot of like, oh, there's an improvement here from last season, and this one just picks that ball up and runs it. Alan, what are your general thoughts about this? I uh, I liked Ian Gomez as, as the uh, very depressive, depressing uh, snapper car. <laughs> he's just like this stoic, like asshole dude. Yeah, he's the he's complete really antithesis of what he was on Cougar Town. Oh, oh, really? I've never seen Cougar Town. Oh my god, that it shows great. I've I've only seen commercials, and then I saw that like I think. Uh, a community person from community crossed over onto it. Yeah, Abed. Who yeah. who was in Captain America: Winter Soldier? Holy shit! It's all connected, guys. It's everything is connected. Yeah, my, one of the first things after I love Cat is Snapper Car is great. Um, <laughs> He's a. I definitely enjoyed him a lot. He's also a lot different from Snapper Car in the comics too. Like. Because in the well, comics, Snapper Car is just an annoying kid kind of guy. He was one of the founding members of the Silver Age, or the original Justice League. Yeah. And he turned He's out a... to be, be a, like a mole multiple times. Yeah, and they kept... Didn't they keep running him back in? Yeah. <laughs> what a fucking dick. <laughs> it was like a... It was a Rick Jones situation. I'll never learn. Um, but I... What else? I, I felt... A lot for Kara because I don't like change. Yeah, and there was just change after change after change. Yeah, I mean the biggest. I, so I guess we should talk about this now. The biggest change, and I feel like I saw this coming. Is a. Uh, it seems as if Cat is a uh, is going to be gone for the rest of our time on this show, or the majority of the time. Um, yeah, she's, sure going, she's going back to L.A. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's going to be a legend. She's going to show up on Legends yeah. tomorrow. She'll, she'll show up on Legends and become the team leader. Yeah. Um, which I can't wait for. She'll just have uh, Rick's coat. So and just sassing them 24-7. Oh, yeah. She's gone, which is why they introduced Snapper Carr, to sort of take that place. I don't know if, I don't know if he's up to the challenge, but I can't wait to see. And uh, Jimmy's gotten a... Um, promotion also yeah he's, so, he's the new cat right but snapper is the one who's going to be making the jokes and calling and uh you know making fun of Kara and all that stuff and you know being the harsh harsh boss while jimmy is being the nice boss who gives her encouraging speeches so i did it find it funny cat's uh line about watching clark can't go away it's like transcendental meditation <laughs> that was that's pretty good. She's got a lot of good lines in this show, and um, they they keep on doing it even in her last episode. So yeah, 
And this episode, the ending, made me want a, a Superman uh, spinoff so much. It's oh, happening. Okay. I'm, I'm calling it right now. It's going to happen. Smallville 2. I don't I know. It, I think it's going to happen. Because I've come around on this, on Tyler Hecklin. Yeah. yeah. I think he's doing a great job. I what, love what this Clark Kent. What yeah. moment brought you around on him? Because I can tell you the one that sold me. It was mainly yeah. his, his, all of his interactions with Perry White over the phone. Oh, those are all great. What's what's finally sold me, and there was a, I'll address it, there was a Lost episode last week, which is lost in the realms of time, space, and we'll never it's be. It's in the Phantom Zone, literally. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's literally um, in the Phantom Zone. But um, on that episode, I, I liked him, but I was I'm not, I wasn't convinced yet. What convinced me is this line that he has after they've after they've been victorious over the Metallos, where he says, "We're going to give you a, a little time out. Th- think about what you've done." And the way that he delivers that line is exactly the way I would want Superman to say that line. It's just perfect, and it just makes me think of Superman just immediately. I don't know. Anything that, like, sold you guys in this other than the Clark um, stuff? Him, him actually smiling is a big thing. Oh. Um, and he's, like he's good. When, he's good he, when Kara flies ahead and he's, he gives her that smile, it's just, like, it's such a great moment. Yeah. And uh, what else? When they stop the, the, car, the car and he's like, oh, I think I scratched your bumper. <laughs> like, that was pretty, like... This Superman is easily my favorite on-screen Superman right now. Yeah. When the guy punches him, like, the balls didn't work, and they still punch me. I think they have to learn. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so, he was like, oh, yeah, the gun, he was, sar- he, it wasn't really sar- sarcasm, it was in the most instant sarcasm I've ever seen. Where it's like, yeah, yeah the bolts didn't work, but why would you tr- try to punch me? Why'd you think the punch would work? He's just so like, really, like, why would you think that would work? How? I, yeah, he's it's so perfect. It's like a, a soft version of Larry David. <laughs> that is a great. That that should be the episode title. <laughs> soft Larry David's. He produces a seven season TV show that everybody loves. <laughs> I, I, I would watch it too. And there okay, was... I have notes. I don't remember what this is referencing. Wind cries at some point. Oh, because I think it may have been either when he, when Superman has leaves. Oh wait, no, I know what that is. That that was a joke. Oh, so, it was one, when he was told he was going to design uh, the Superman suit, like and make a new yeah. suit for Superman. Wait, I get to design a new super suit, and he's no pressure. And then, when are you crying? <laughs> <laughs> so many great moments. It's. I think this is like one of the better written DC CW sh- shows. Oh yeah, and here's the thing: this episode was funny. Like, Flash has its moments, and Legends has its moments of being pretty funny. Um, I think Brandon Ralph probably gets the most stuff him or Mick Rory, but this yeah. this was a funny episode of Supergirl compared to previous episodes, which. You know, they had their jokes, and, and Cat is always there, but nothing nothing like this. Yeah, it's a very, it's very well put together show. Yeah. Um, like I said earlier, the action was really great. I have written down in my notes, uh, double, double Teams Batman, uh, which is uh, in reference to the double Metallo fights, which were oh, yeah. perfect, um, I think. Just... I should have seen that coming, I, but I didn't. So when Alex shows up and she's in that um, all-you-need-is-kill suit. And she's got an exo suit? Yeah. The anti-Kryptonian uh, gear that they introduced right. in Season 1. Yeah. That, again, I should have seen that coming. I should have remembered that she had that, but I didn't. So when she shows up, I just I, I got so excited. And then when we cut to... When we cut to Metropolis, and it's Superman, and he's there, and he's fighting the tallow, and then that little girl shows up. I'm like, okay, it's just a little girl. Why are we seeing a little girl? Then and her then eyes she... go red. Yep. 
She turns into John Jones, and they start beating down on Metallo. Uh, I, I believe it was the Asian Metallo, which we are going to call him Asian Metallo. Yeah, that's uh, who he is. Because that's his defining quality. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> and they're just beating down on him. And it just cuts back and forth to them, to the Metallos getting their asses handed to him. And it's so great. Uh, I really liked how Superman and Supergirl had distinctive fighting styles. Oh, like, yeah. Superman was, like, big booting people to, like in the face, and, like, Supergirl's yeah. kind of, like, throwing punches, but it's still, like, it's still, like, a girl fighting, kind of. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then Alex is just, like, full-on MMA, just yeah. She's throwing fucking... kicks, throwing punches, just going up and down and everywhere. It's it's really great. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it was a great scene. Yeah. Uh, two things. One, I liked the whole family uh, bit that it's not about saying be, someone telling it. Uh, when says that uh, as someone who was raised in foster care or in, in by not his parents because his parent his mother something happened to his mother and his par- his father is toy man. Mm. Being told that you should be happy that someone was there, was there to take care of you isn't re- what really what fa- what it's all about. It's about being there for that person. Hmm. It's a. Um, it's it's, it's, like... it's part of the when Alex is saying that is she's right. I yeah. Well, it's when she was kind of being a bitch. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Yeah, and two. Yeah. When it was earned, but yes, yeah, she, yeah, she when, deserved it at that moment. When the Cadmus, the head of Cadmus, or the Cadmus scientist. Yeah. Or whatever her title is. She's unnamed at this point. I, I assume she is a character that's well known. Uh, I couldn't yeah. tell you off the top of my head who's the head of Ca- Project Cadmus in the comics. Yeah, wasn't it Waller? Or was yeah, that she, was that just she's, a, she's, associated, for... she's associated with with her Eiling. That ooh, that I don't know. This could be Eiling, I guess. I wish Eiling would show up. I mean, this, they could have just gender-crossed it with this one. I don't know. Um, but be... she says, I'll tell your father you say hello. And I re- forgot yeah. what I re- where I read it. It may have been Newsarama. But there's a they, – they assume there's a, an assumption that Jeremiah isn't – is no longer human. Yeah, being no, a so cap- like a or he could I, be I, I, cyborg Superman. Yeah, probably. that's one of the leading theories because I he, think he, he he's been held by a captive by uh, or willing by Cadmus for twelve years. That's interesting, huh? Yeah, and it would they could really market the shit out of cyborg Superman. Yeah, yeah they by literally having. One of the Supermen. Yeah. I think a lot of things are going to happen. I, I'm i calling it right now. We're going to get Power Girl at some point. I guarantee Yeah, that's that's for sure. I'm, well, last season, think... last season, that's how they were going to... That's how they wanted to introduce her into the de- into the Arrowverse. Yeah, there were a lot of, lot of rumors about that. Uh, so many. And I, I think that... I don't think they'll do it that way. I think what they're going to do is um, the storyline from Justice League Unlimited where they've been cloning uh, their own Kara and it's a real clone, not a android like they did with Bizarro. Oh, so, yeah, okay, I remember. And that was their way of doing Power Girl without doing Earth 2. And I think it worked perfectly on that show. And they... From time to time, they have taken things from the animated series, and it would be the perfect 
thing to take because it would just fit so well within this world. But yeah. Um, also, I, like... I have one nitpick. Okay. And it's when Alex says to, to I think, when I haven't been on a date in over two years. That is not true because she had a date with Maxwell Lord in last season. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wait, Maxwell well, Lord is in this show? He was in season one. He didn't. He I didn't make. One, then. He didn't yeah, make. He didn't. Fi- he didn't make it to the to season two. He stayed oh, in L.A. I'll finish it after I know in the flesh. Did he die? No, he he helped them in the season finale. He spread that message. Oh, that's right. Unless they write him off as being destroyed in that one rocket from episode one this season. I, know. I, I think they just, they're just going to ignore it, and they've already they replaced him with Lena Luthor, so it's fine. All is well, yeah. I guess. Um, Lena Luthor's my new Flash wife. I mean, DC waifu. You have so many. <laughs> I have so many. Cause they're we've all, lost like, count. You need to be stopped. But, um, the thing I did, I did like at, was at the end with mon Yeah, I like that too. That was... That and was also... Really well. th- during the episode where he was uh, using the kryptonite and they ha- they had no idea what was going on. Mm. And I'm not someone who, who knows a lot about mon I know more about him from the sup- the f- from Superboy. The Superboy yeah. run that from uh, about seven years That's... ago. Yeah. I know that at some point he's like a Superman replacement, or that he's been that in the past. That's, that's no, he's he's he 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 was the lead in the Superman title during World of New Krypton. Okay. And but he's primarily the, the uh, Superman of Legion of superheroes. He's, he's not okay. even a Kryptonian, though. Yeah, he's that's the thing. Uh, he's a Daxamite. Super, Superboy thought he was Kryptonian. That's why he get, he named him Monel. Oh. Uh, hmm. They might change things. One, but yeah. Um. But then again, Superboy in the comics right now is. They don't. He's been. He's pretty much. He's. Fuck it. He's in the Phantom Zone. Right. Um. Hunter, do you have any uh, any like standout moments that we haven't mentioned already uh, for this episode? Um, let me think. Oh, um, I think uh, when Ka- when Kara has to stand up to snap her car, it's definitely like it's yeah. I think her being this having to actually stand up for herself with Cat with, with Grant, it's like. It's a brand new kind of dynamic to the show that wasn't there before where Cat Grant and her had this kind of rapport and this kind of friendliness with each other. Mm. But at this point, it's like it's a new dynamic. You have Jimmy, who's probably going to like do anything for her. And then you have Snapper Carr, who's just going to be like, no, fuck you. Do it yourself. Like, he's very old school. It's just like, I think that's the most interesting change to the show is that they're trying to switch up the d- dynamic of her personal life as well as, as um, her, her career as the superhero. Right. Yeah. But other than that, I really don't have any other kind of thoughts yeah. on it other than it's really good. Yeah, I like that a lot. And I like that they're kind of using... They're using the fact that they've moved channels to... Uh, impact the show for the better. They're using it. They're not just ignoring the fact that a pretty big change happened. They moved to an entirely different network. Um, and it's, I think it's really well done. It's a, it's really smartly done uh, so far. Um, and uh, I just have one last standout thing, and it's from the very uh, end-ish episode of the episode, and it's... Um, Right before uh, Tyler Hecklin's Superman is about to leave, and he has the 
kryptonite with him. And I think it says that he's going to throw it into the sun. I, I don't remember specifically. I, th- I right- assumed he was going to move it to the uh, the the fortress. He was going to put it on Arrow's prison island. Yeah, yeah only in you. Yeah. What that's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Deathstroke's going to become a kryptonite mutant, and, uh, and our favorite part of Super or, of Smallville will return. Um, but right before uh, right before he leaves, they have that little moment, and they're both tearing up a little bit. Uh, and that line, I, I, I wrote down an approximation of it. Uh, I think it's Cow Shao. Uh, cow show, I don't remember, but cow show. The way... Yeah, and, and it's yeah. There's no, there's no d- that real word for it in English. Yeah, and it's. I, and I think he says it's something like a "see you again" or something like that. Uh, or yeah, I can't remember exactly. I didn't write down the actual meaning, but yeah, I loved that moment. That is the standout moment for me from this episode. Um, really, really poignant. Again, the actors in this episode, I think they all really brought it. Um, am, I the right... one, am I the only one that loved the, that awesome flying down, then just swish, swish, he's back to Clark Kent? When yeah, he, I love that. Oh, yeah, hiding, behind behind the, the, that uh, really cool. hiding it behind something? Oh, yeah. God, that was great. I love every single time they did that. I love when she, like... She landed right in front of a column, and then she came out, and she was Kara again. I love... They just do it so well. It's better than nothing like the Flash does, where he just, like, the costume appears. Yeah. It's so so weird and off-putting. Yeah. I... I, Yeah. It's three seasons in, and they haven't done the ring yet. uh, Yeah. Which bothers me. And they teased it. They teased it. They keep on teasing it, and... They just haven't. They need to. Yeah, they, they need really to. Please. I, I, maybe he'll get it by the end of the season. I would be fine with that if they're gonna keep on holding it off. But yeah. But I should uh, say that. See the my this man seeing Manel on Supergirl. It's really all that Legion fans have to go go on because. We have uh, in the actual in Batman issue nine right now. They have I forgot who, who she is from from Le- the Legion. She, they 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 named her Jane. Do- they have her named as Jane Doe. Uh huh. But she made she made the Legion symbol, in like in a in a glass uh, in a window cell in Arkham. Hmm. It's one thing. It's one of the things that, ha- that happened, or it's one of the rebirth part of the rebirth stuff. Yeah, it, I remember reading something about that, but I forgot who it is. Yeah, I saw I saw a picture, and it looked interesting. It was... I don't know why, yeah. but I've never liked the Legion. Huh? And I never... I really like. I really want to see. Like, I really want to read for the first time the Legion. I mean, I know yeah. there's, like, the Mike Grell stuff, there's the Paul Levitt stuff. The the Legion itself has never been interesting to me, but I've always found, like, like Lightning Lad's story is actually really interesting. Mm-hmm. Just, like, them on their own are interesting enough for me to, like, care, but I really, like, as a team, I just don't really care. Yeah, I, I've always liked them in the cartoons, I guess. Yeah. That's, that's been my exposure to them. Like... And I wasn't like super impressed, but I, I liked what I saw. So yeah. like I liked the episode in JLU, um, and I I liked their solo show that they did. Uh, I thought that that was really well done. Uh, favorite character, of course, was the werewolf guy or whatever his name was, because it's me and I love werewolves. But, also, they were great on Smallville, the three of them. They were great on Smallville back when they did that. Uh, really, really well done when they did that. Uh, I really liked um, when they brought back Brainiac as Brainiac. Did they make him five or did they make him a later version? I can't remember. They uh, Brainiac 
Uh, I don't remember which. Well, they made him some future version of Brainiac. Maybe he didn't say. No, in uh, the in season to in season ten, he says that uh, the Legion helped cure him of the whatever was wrong with him, and he he's known in the future as Brainiac Five. So it's okay. really the same. He's the same. It's the same same Brainiac, but. Just uh, with with a different name. Okay. Um, any like final final thoughts on Supergirl removed Flash? Nope. All right. Okay. Um. So the first thing I have in my notes is a line from Wells. Uh, uh, I wonder if you guys can guess this. Um. Not. Yeah. <laughs> That was though him saying that was the best part. Is like he's I love when Cisco is like, is that an R two thing now? Are you just now getting that? <laughs> I, I love how he like. Did he return to season two? Uh, yeah. Does, does it exp- do they explain why he's not Zoo anymore? You mean no? Okay. Do you not know wh- who Harry is? Harry's. I know okay, so, no, okay, so that's Earth 2, Harrison Wells. Yeah, who oh, okay. he's, that's he's what I figured. Guy. I was just wondering what, if that's what it was. Cause like, yeah, yeah, wait, Earth where two. are you in The Flash right now? Uh, Midway through Season 2. Yeah, They he... should have done that by now. Wait, he's... I think I'm midway through Season 2. What episode are you on? Hold on. Uh, I don't want to open up Netflix right now, but I'm in the within the first five. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, he's about to show up. Like, okay, he's. You're just gonna figure it out because you've seen like the episodes where it says. Has, where, like, wait, has King Shark showed up yet? I think that's the next episode. I'm not sure. <laughs> right, but you should have had like the post credit scenes of like Harrison, and you're not sure what's going on. You've had those, right? Oh. Yes. Where you're like, oh, who's that? That's Harrison Wells, like. There's one on Earth Two where it's him and he's talking to a bunch of school school children. Oh, I think I seen that one. Yeah, there's a couple of those that happen before he okay. introduces himself. I, I was just curious. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I love I love how he came back. Like I love Tom Cavanaugh. Like this show has really given me a, a appreciation for him as an actor. Yeah, he's. He's amazing. Um, but yeah. He's... Yeah, he came back this episode. Uh, I I loved him. Uh, I loved how his... Uh, I love his delivery of every so line. Fast. The day Tom Cavanaugh leaves the show is the day I stop watching the show. I, yeah, I mean... It, yeah, I, I can't imagine how they're going to... I hope they don't try to get rid of him so they have to figure out a way to bring him back next season. They just keep him because he's so he's such a good part of the show or introduce another version of him or something. But just 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 keep him on the show and never let go. Yeah, just hold on tight, Jack. Yeah. Um, Yeah, this is a really good episode, especially for him. Just when he finds out what Barry has done. He doesn't really need to say anything. He just needs to give him that look. He's like, you fucking idiot. God damn it. Um, Yeah, the moment when they said, when, well, spoilers, uh, Jesse has, became, is a speedster now. Yeah. Yeah, she's Jesse Quick. Without the formula. Yeah, and she's just enjoying the hell out of it. And her smile is infectious as she's yeah. just running around. Uh, it's really good. But the best part was when Caitlin. It was not that Caitlin or Cisco says, "You want to try out in this new in this new room or in this room," and Barry and Wells and Jesse have no idea what's what they're talking about. Right. Oh, yeah. The speed lab. Like, the speed lab. Oh. I have never been in this room, Barry, and I guess neither of you. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, yeah, I thought a lot of good... Agenda... Ooh, 
What was that? I said there's a lot of good moments in this episode. Yeah. Um, I, I thought... Guess the... No, I you thought go Mag- ahead. I thought Magenta, the girl who played Magenta, did a really good job. So did I. Uh, yeah, Joey, Joey King, uh, she, did a, she did a pretty good job. Um, it's hard to sell, like, dissociative uh, identity disorder in TV shows. That's why I'm worried, like, if they make a Moon Knight show, I hope they keep that, but at least it makes me worried... Yeah. But, um, yeah, she did good. Also, she it's... I don't think people like her character since she was one of those, uh, new rogues that was created by, I think, either Mark Waid or Wilson and DeMeo during the the Bart Allen Flash years. Uh, oh, I was reading something earlier. She was created by Marv Wolfman. Seriously? Oh. Yeah. What the hold fuck on, was Marv Wolfman doing involved with Flash? Uh, hold on. Was she created for, like, Teen Titans or something? Um, uh, it says... Da, 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 da. Hold on, I'm scrolling through. Uh, where did I see that? This is great podcasting. Um, I know, this is great. Um... Uh, you, you do that. Um, <clears throat> you guys go ahead. Hold on. I'll figure it out. Another thing in my notes is uh, that I wrote down is a dumbass Wally. Um, yeah, because Wally. he literally goes, oh, so it took it took an extreme fear to, or uh, an extremely ter- uh, fear, fearful moment to gain your powers. Okay, I'll do that. Oh, yeah. You step in front of a car and you got your powers, so I'm going to do the same. Yeah, because that's how that works. That's... That's a real smart thing to do, Wally. You're supposed to be in college for advanced engineering, and you step out in front of a car. God damn you. Kids, yeah. don't forget, don't look before you cross the road. Yeah, yeah. That, that is the golden rule. Unless you're a chicken, in which case it doesn't matter, because who knows why the chickens cross the roads. Yeah. Yeah, Comic Vine isn't loading right now, but... um. Well, I swear to God, it says it, it was Marvin Wolfman. Anyways. I believe you. Um, yeah, I thought she did a really good job. I thought uh, she did a really job of making her main character and Magenta two different people. Um, and she was, cr- she was created by, or she was given her powers by Alchemy. Yeah. Another running thing from the season, which... Leads me to speculate that the big, his big uh, thing will be Wally in the near the end of the season. I think that's a possibility. I also think he might get back into street racing at some point, just because he's angry. And, and that... that's how and what happened on Earth two or in the Flashpoint timeline. Yeah, what happened. Yeah, that could happen. Well, and that it was like an experimental car, but yeah, so... it could be. Combination. So, um, can we call it right now that Draco Malfoy is Doctor Alchemy? I don't want to do that. Part of me doesn't I, believe it, but like I I'm kind of split. I think it's him. Like I was pretty sure last week. Um, this past episode, I was very certain because, well, like, after Magenta shows up to like talk with Alchemy, being like, "I'm having so many problems with this," blah 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 blah, and Alchemy kind of scolds her for it after she tries to kill Draco Malfoy. So I, I think, feel like there's some sort of a connection there as to what it is. Yet. Oh, no. The glass of water kind of did it for me, too, because he just kind of looked at her and immediately knew. Like, he was a little too eager to, like, maybe I should expose her. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it really does... If you were in that situation where you are the bad guy... Well, yeah, if he, depending on whether or not he thinks he's the bad guy... But if you're the bad guy, are you going to try to expose yourself or, or expose the other person? How are you going to trick people into thinking that, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I do hope I'm wrong, though. I do hope that it, they, they swear at me. I do, too. I, I, love, I have to say, though, I love the scene where uh, Julian was just screaming at Frankie. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's like that. He's such a right prick. 
Tom yeah. Felton is good at playing one character, one character only, and that's just a giant douchebag. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I've looked it up, and Hunter is right. He, uh, Magenta was created by uh, Wolfman and Perez, or Perez. Uh-huh. And she was actually a one-time girlfriend of Wally West. Yeah, that Ooh. threw me off. I did not. I did not know she that. She gained ma- magnetic powers, which killed her family. Okay, magnetic powers. That's different. No, that's it's the same as the. Uh, yeah, she's she's Magneto, basically. Yeah, but not as cool. Yeah, not as. Cool. Oh, they didn't explain that in this episode, then, because I thought it was just that she was like a TK. I didn't realize that it was Magneto. No, it's- no, because the light pole, that's metal, and then that little plaque thing was metal. The car that she lifted was metal. It was all metal. And the bow. Oh. That, the bow is the most effective weapon. <laughs> like, Bates, I, wrote, I wrote uh, down in my notes. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of good stuff in this. Um, I thought the... Uh, I thought the way that they got Harrison to agree to let Jesse become a hero was really well done. They had to, like you said, have a boat literally falling on top of a hospital for him to say, no, this this needs to happen. She has to become a hero. I can't hold her back anymore. Um, and... Uh, mm-hmm. And we you were know. talking shit about Wally's uh, Wally's mask, but I don't think she has a mask. Yeah, I don't think she does either. Um, I did I did see like a pic from like I think from her Instagram, and she just has a domino mask. Yeah, oh, when yeah. I saw the uh, one of the images on YouTube for the, like as a, the promo for the ne- next week's episode, it looked for it, it, I saw what what looked like a domino mask, like a red domino yeah. mask. Yeah. I'm fairly sure her costume is uh, the speedster from last season. Uh, trajectory. Yeah, trajectory. I'm pretty sure it's the same costume, just like huh. repainted um, and with a flash symbol put on the chest. I'm sure if I held him up back to or side to side, I'd be proven right. Um, but it's a cool costume, so why not use it again? Um, but yeah, I'm really interested in how they're going to use her this season. If I had to guess, I'd say she's going to be there till the mid-season finale, at, in which that, at which point Wally will get his powers and he'll take over. So we'll have two reverse flashes, or not two reverse flashes, two um, kid flashes, two or two sidekicks in this season uh, hmm. to set up Jesse so that when they go back to Earth 2, she's an effective vigilante over there because she's learned from Barry, and then we get our own Kid Flash in this universe to perhaps replace Barry in some, for some reason. Who knows? Uh, but yeah. Well, uh... there is going to be another speedster. Yeah, there's, yeah, well, yeah we know. I'm, just saying, I'm talking I'm about Savitar. Before. Wait, you're not talking about Savitar? No, that's who I'm talking about. Yeah. We we know Savitar. He's coming around. Uh, save him for his episode. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Any, what would your standout moments be? Uh, I guess. Um, let's see. I think Barry, any, any time Barry and, uh, Draco Malfoy, I can't remember that that character. Julian, name. Uh, uh, s- something. Yeah. It was Julian yeah, Dorn. Julian. We were talking about this last week. It was Julian Dorn in all the press, but uh, Julian can't... Albert. Yeah. And then uh, I believe actually one of the names that were once given to Alchemy in his original run, like way back when, his first name was Albert. So I don't know if maybe that might affect something. Yeah, I think. Well, every time they're put together I think there's it's just great because they have this weird kind of chemistry where yeah. it feels like they genuinely don't like each other <laughs> but yeah. uh, I think that anytime those are together those are standout moments for me and what else standout moments 
Uh, definitely the costume reveal for Jesse Quick. That's like the the coolest part of the episode for me, at least. Yeah. Alan. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't there a run Jesse run? Yeah, that's. I mean, anytime he gets to say that uh, is great. Um, anytime anybody gets to see say that is pretty. Great, it's just I run think. name run. Yeah. Yeah, and it works so well. They've always they've always gotten a good actor to use to do it, whether it's uh, Tom Kavanaugh or Stephen Amell when he's done or it. Or John uh, Wesley Ship. Oh yes, yeah. It's always it's always delivered well. Uh, and it's always poignant in the moment. And I'm I really not like mistaken, the... didn't Teddy Sears got to say something like that when he was Zoom? He did well before before he was revealed as Zoom, yeah. We got to see him deliver that line. I think. Yeah, he did get to say run, Barry, run at some point. And after... No, I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking along the line. I'm remembering along the lines of run, flash, run. He does get to say, yeah. He gets to say, he gets to say it a couple times. He says it in the finale of last season because they're about to do the race because first two seasons both end in a race. Um, no, the first two seasons end with... Some... Manipulation of Barry's powers. Yeah, a race. <laughs> uh, yeah. Run Jesse Run was a standout moment for me too. Um, I just just Grant Gustin uh, in this episode was a standout for me when uh, Jesse is keeping the boat up um, so that he can go down and talk Magenta down from destroying a hospital. Um, and I wrote down in my notes, he's going full Gustin. He's just he's just putting it all out there. He's just doing his thing. And it's the reason I think that we love the show so much, because he is so good. And he's just delivering this great performance. And he's so convincing and charming. So yeah, that's my standout. Grant Gustin being Grant Gustin. Yeah, let me interjecting. We haven't seen the time rate rates pop up this uh, season so far. Yeah, it's starting to get on my nerves. Like in the first two episodes, when people were commenting on it, I was like, it's the first two episodes, guys. We're still establishing what this new season is. There's still there's still time. I I think by now we should have had some sort of. Something to address. It's a shame Connor isn't here right now because I know what he would say. I'm going to say it. Black Flash. Black Racer. I have... No, Black Flash. Yeah. Oh, Black Black Racer is different. <laughs> I made that same mistake too. Um, I feel like they're saving their Black Flashes. Um, Black he's Racer he's... is the embodiment of death. Black, he's a new Black... god. Kinda. Yeah, sort of. No, no, he's... Well, yeah, basically. Black Flash is... He's, he takes... He's a... He's a... A force he, of he's, the... He's an, an object of the Speed Force. Yeah, he's the right. same thing, but for the Speed Force. Yeah. And we assume that that's how Teddy Sears will come back as a representation of the Speed Force in human form. Yes. And... He'll have some of Zoom's uh, characteristics, some of his uh, his flair. Uh, but yeah, I feel like they're saving that. They're saving that for the right episode. Um, I'm more excited for next week. Yeah, because of Mirror, Mirror Master. Yeah. Mirror Master, yes, yes. I keep on forgetting Mirror Master. Mirror Master, who. I speculated could have been a full season villain, but they went with Alchemy, which I feel is actually working out better. Uh, I still think Mirror Master could be a main season villain, but they're clearly demoting him to a more Captain Cold or uh, Villain of the Week uh, level. But whatever, looks cool. Yeah, my favorite part of the, the teaser for next week for next week's episode. Very stuck in the mirror, and Iris is checking out her ass. That was really... <laughs> and she's like, is that what it looks like? Okay, so Black Racer is from the 
um, Prime Earth line of DC, even though they both embody death or God of death. They both have that, except one's from a different yeah. line, even yeah. though they're basically the same thing. That's what, that's what we just said. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, isn't, isn't one of them from the, um, God, what was it called? Never mind. Just never mind. I was going <laughs> to. Uh, no, I'm gonna get into this. We'll we'll save this for another episode. Yeah, I don't want to go deep into. There's so this this topic is so rich that we have to save it. Yeah, no, I like I actually have a few ideas for off season episodes that I'm working on, but yeah, I'll trust me, I'll work this into one. Don't... All right, yeah. So I feel like unless somebody has like a final thought on Flash, uh, we have to move on, guys. Um. No, I, oh, think I do. We said really, it's a I good do. show. I have one more point that uh, actually will carry into Arrow a bit. Um, so I don't know if you guys remember, there was a small point on which um, Tom Felton's character uh, was asked by uh, Barry Allen, um, "Why do you hate me?" or like, "Why do you not like me?" And he gave a simple answer, which was. I can't trust you. I think it was from the last, the last episode we had, but he said those lines and Arrow is essentially has that same little pickup this episode with a uh, wild dog and uh, Stephen Amell's um, Casey Jones. Right. Huh. Yeah, um, but anyways, on to Arrow, I guess. If you guys want to talk about, it. I didn't watch Arrow, but yeah, I didn't want. I, I knew I forgot. I knew I forgot to do something this week. Don't worry, Arrow this week was full of nonsense okay. politicalness, as yes. well as um, some more Brockva and some shooting, killing people in the legs, and he really likes was... doing that, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Okay, so um. This is the best episode of Arrow in two seasons. Period. Okay. Uh, that, the best. Uh, well, I'd argue with that, but sure. Can, 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 can you um, go no, into I'm, a little detail why? Um, because it's actually good. Okay. Um, that's, a, that's a start. <laughs> um, it's, it's not an abomination. Um, no, it's just so... I never defined what it is that I do like about Arrow. And here's what it needs to do. It needs to be dumb, but not so dumb that I want to turn my TV off. Okay. That I can get on board with. The action needs to be better than anything you would expect from a show on the CW. And it does that. It is better than anything you would ever expect a CW show to have. I Um, will give it I will give it that, that the action is... Like, I, I'm just waiting for you to finish. I'm just waiting. Okay. There needs to be villains who are cheesy, but not too cheesy. There's this sliding scale, okay? John Barrowman, in the height of his Barrowman powers on this show, was so incredibly campy and seen chewery. He was chewing on the ceiling, he's chewing on the doors, he's chewing on everything. And he's just doing it all the, in the best ways. And then you have characters like Count Vertigo, which are the worst things, worst concoctions. I can't even explain how terrible I thought Count Vertigo was, and the B-Girl from Flash and Arrow. Uh, terrible. Just absolutely terrible. Okay, so there's this sliding scale of cheesy, and I want somewhere in the middle. And but I, what about when it was Peter Stormare? Because that was awesome. No, that was amazing. That Count Vertigo number two in this show is one of my top Arrow villains, just as far as the villains who started on Arrow. And, and wasn't he, that also not an, an, one of the many Tommy comebacks, even though it was only a hallucination? Yeah, there was a moment where Tommy got to come 
got to come back other than this season because he's 100% Prometheus. I guarantee it, but whatever. That's beyond the point. So, yeah, we can't really talk about this episode. All I can say is uh, Cody we Rhodes was on we this episode. Wait. Yeah, I did see that, and he looked great. Um, he's he's roadsing it up. Um, I don't he know played. what that means. But uh, he's actually a really good actor. Uh, his fight scenes with Stephen Amell in this episode were really good. Um, he falls in a vat of stardust. Just let me put um, oh, let me in, Coach. <laughs> That's put great. Me in. I would love Just it. Just put if me in, really... Coach. I would love it if they really found a way. If they knew about that, if they tried to blog it somehow. <laughs> I think they're. I think they knew what they yeah, were doing. They were very nice. aware. I feel like the person who wrote this episode is someone who's versed in WWE because uh, I felt like there were references to the WWE that I wasn't getting. And mm-hmm. do you know so, where then and you remember? Because I might know them. Me and Kyle. Con- but there's very specific things. Like, I'm sure during his fight with Cody Rhodes, there was a callback to something that happened in the WWE. Because they fought during, like, SummerSlam or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there was, like, a very specific callback in one of the it moves. Was, it was not great. <laughs> did uh, did Stephen Amell do a dive on onto uh, Cody? Because that's, <laughs> that's basically what happened. That's all his big spot was. Okay. Um... Yeah. I guess, yeah. Since you guys didn't see, I can't go into any deep detail. Can I start now? Uh, or? Yeah, you can do your Chris. Your, your okay, Chris. so Ragman showed up, of course. And I mean, let's talk about Ragman for a second. The character that appeared in only like two episodes, the episode said. First of all, he was told by Felicity, because he's from Haven Rock, the place that Felicity sent the bomb to bowl up in. She told them straight up, and he was like, I'm out, fam. Then during the like fight scene back more into the episode, we saw uh, Curtis actually full dress up like uh, Mr. Terrific with the um, black leather jacket with the um, fair uh, play. shit. What's the, the yeah fair play written on both sleeves, and then the um, face painted uh, gray T on his face, as yeah. well as uh, cut the afro down. Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing. That's the only thing that's bothering me about him right now is that that afro. Because uh, he, I don't he think he's the, ever had an afro in the comics. No, he hasn't. <laughs> no, they when he was actually in full Mr. Terrific, they like I don't know what they did, like braided his hair, like pushed it down or something. It was they, like a they, they, get rid of it. Yeah, they like did something to make it shorter. Yeah, I, I may but, uh, thank God I have this the episode DVR. I may have may have to watch it. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Stardust, yeah. like the. Chemical, he's fighting with the um, wild dog, Casey Jones ripoff, uh, another Stephen Amell thing because he plays that in TMNT. But he's fighting with him, and then he falls into the vat or whatever, but like punctures, uh, I don't know, a hole in the roof, so it starts right into the vat, and then it like mixes with the chemical DNA, and then he goes to the hospital, um, supposedly deceased, the Stardust character, wakes up and is a zombie, and then get shot three times and so they like just go to punch him just like they did in uh, Supergirl which again no sense there but anyway um, we have now devolved in from magic into zombies in this new season which clearly (laughs) oh and mummies if you count ragman so we're basically one wolf man away from being like full uh, cereal breakfast Breakfast cereal, uh, monster. Too bad this is too bad. This isn't Marvel, so Werewolf by Night can't show up. Because I'd watch it if Werewolf by Night. <laughs> I feel like there's a way. I feel like there's a way that they're gonna introduce some obscure werewolf Dude, type character. If they if they introduce a Legion of Monsters into DC, into um into Arrow, I, mean, I would watch. They have Ragman, who's basically a mummy. They have. I, I know. I saw. He, he looks great. Yeah, they have Ragman. They have a zombie dude that I, he's still alive. Yeah, right? yeah. Because he's still alive after that episode. So I mean, he could totally be like, "Yo, hey, yeah. I'm a zombie now." He's coming yeah. back. Um. Yeah, there's a lot of good, yeah. bit, a lot of good stuff in this episode. Yeah, like, uh, I Arrow. This was like Gotham level campiness of, oh, I'm a zombie now. 
Yeah. Guess I'd better go and try and make more zombies now. Die. Oh, look. Oh, well. My tendons got um, cut by a green man in a hoodie. Yeah, it's... Oh, well. The Dark Knight Returns type moment where he just... He just cuts all his tendons and he says, You may not be able to feel pain, but you can't move if your tendons are cut. And it's just... It's, it's because really like, that's what you think about your tendons when you can't stand up, not your leg or anything else. You're just like, you know, my tendons aren't feeling right right now. <laughs> I think I pulled a tendon. I'm going to have to sit this one out, coach. Yeah. Yeah. They use a I'm lot just of saying people. if he wasn't dead, Dusty Rhodes, I'd rather see Dusty Rhodes on Arrow than Cody. Oh, my God. Because... <laughs> Who would Dusty Rhodes play if he was on? Uh, I don't know, but he—he's one of the best talkers of all. He was one of the best talkers of all time. He—he could have, he could have won an award if he chose to do acting. He could have. He's—he's he's amazing. <laughs> R.I.P. Dude. Uh, um. Okay. Yeah, I feel like that's as deep as we can get into this Arrow discussion. Um. Do you want to move to Legends? Let's yes, some please. Let's talk about Legends. Cause I might as well jump episode. into some Commander Steel and some of the old Stargirl and some of the great greatness that is that. It was so good. It was... Yeah. This it's was like, a really good I, I didn't like Commander Steel's outfit, but that was like my only real nitpick. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can't like, really knock it, though. That's the thing, because it's supposed to be set in 1942. So, yeah. like, all their costumes are kind of, like, well, sewn together, kind like, like, well, Watchmen. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it just kind of made me laugh when he had the hat on, like the pilot mm-hmm. hat. And yeah. it just, I, I had chuckled a little bit. But it was yeah. a good episode. Um, I wish it had more Rory. But, because in that first yeah. episode, he was just chewing it up. Like. Oh, yeah. He was just, he was killing it a lot. He, he did have a good, couple good ones, though, this <laughs> This episode. Um, what else? Uh, Baron Blitzkrieg was really cool. Like, even though he looked like that CG kind of. Yeah. What, he looked it's like the um, Family Guy skit in the um, Star Wars Family Guy with yeah. uh, Rush Limbaugh in the um, Grand Corps pit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a religion. <laughs> Yeah. You don't have to pay taxes. Oh, God. Um, yeah. I thought he looked like something from a sci-fi original movie. He did. An asylum yeah. picture. Um, it was, like, really poorly done. Yeah, when yeah. you when you see a picture of Baron Blitzkrieg and, like, his like, old comics, like, he had that kind of goofy welder's mask-looking mask, and he's got a cape, and it's like... But, and this, he just broke-ass Hulk. Mm-hmm. But... It yeah. didn't really bother me that much because I still really love this episode. Um, uh, what else? Uh, Our Man. Our, Our Man was great. Rex yeah. Tyler. I, I know the reason why actors. Connor should have been here. That, that, I'm, yeah. I'm mad that he's not here. Because I was really he, he got um, when, one of the uh, things he loves so much. Got to do this little thing. One thing oh, Connor but... loves is verse slash the vibrating hand. vibrating hand to people and yeah, and if he was here, he would have been drinking that Kool Aid so hard. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Matthew Lester is really great in this episode. Yeah, the Legion just... Doom is so far is really cool. Yeah, we still haven't seen Merlin or Cold. But... Yeah, I which kind of depresses me because I love Leonard Snart. I love like that that actor just yeah encompasses the smug asshole so well. Like yeah. They're, they're saving it. They're saving that reveal. That yeah. I that, hope that. he has a hot cocoa cup. That's the only. That's my only. Like, I need yeah. to see it at least once. Same. Very nice article just... on the disappearing middle class. How nice prose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know why I remember. I remember that line of all lines. That and that and um, who doesn't love a thank you? Yeah, is one of my favorites. Not so many. God. 
Yeah, they're definitely saving him. I don't know why they're saving Merlin though. Maybe maybe they're just waiting to give him next episode or something. But I think they're they're gonna save him for last. Maybe. I feel like after the way that he ended the last season of Arrow, he needs a redemption because <laughs> he did not come out well. Um. Yeah. This episode, yeah, this episode was really good. Um, well, if you want to, for those of you, if you do not want to see him as Michael Merlin, but want to see him as Captain Jack Harkness, Torchwood issue two out today. Oh, or God. out now. Written by him and his sister. Support your local comic shots. Yeah. I think we have a Doctor Who reference in every episode of this podcast right now. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I gotta start watching. I almost bought. I almost bought some Doctor Who today at Walmart, but it was like too oh, expensive don't, at the moment. Don't. But I'll series go back one for through it. eight are on Amazon. Yeah, mm. yeah, one through eight. Start with season five. Season no, start out. start with Eccleston. No, he's already tried that and it didn't work out for him. So well, then Tenet. Then no, don't start with Tenet. Do not start with <laughs> Why do you hate, hate him? I started the war. I don't hate him. This is why we have a rule against Dr. Who in this. His podcast. first episode and his last episode are god-awful. Period. Because Russell T. Okay. Davies wrote them. That's why. Okay, yeah. back to Lisa tomorrow. Uh, um, no, but if you're going to start... If you're going to start 11th Doctor, <laughs> that's... Period. I don't okay, care. Okay, I'll start... Oh, Arlen, I'll do whatever you tell me. <laughs> I'm just, but, yeah. Legends of Tomorrow, that's right. Um, was I the uh, one who thought, who loved that crying Nazi? The crying, oh, the... When the Martin that, Stein uh, is impersonating that, that singer? Max yeah, Martin. that was, yeah. that was really great. And then uh, Ray Palmer turned to Nazi salute and he can't do it. He's like... <laughs> Huh? He's like, huh? Ah, huh? <laughs> oh, hell. <laughs> and then just punches him, punches the dude right in the face. That was really good. That whole sequence, I just really adored. Like, uh, the fact that he sings Edelweiss was just, just so funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, and, do, like, I mean, the dude's Jewish. Yeah. And he has to sing that song. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Um, I really like Vixen. Uh, Vixen 2, I guess we'll call Amaya. it. Amaya. Yeah. Um, Amaya. Amaya, Amaya, what? Tomato, tomato. She's, she's really good. I mean, yeah, the she first was, uh... was, uh, She had a lot to live up to. And she did a good job. I thought her power, like, the visualization of her powers were really neat. Like, they got, like, the like hologram gorilla was really cool. Yeah. Um, as she did when she was on Arrow, just makes me think, ah, Fixin', she's one step away from Animal Man, and Animal Man's one step away from Swamp Thing. Oh, man, I'm looking at a, uh, my Animal Man and of Nimbus, and it's like, I was really like, show. Wait, what'd what you say? That? Chris just scraped something, or he took, took uses Wolverine claws to. Yeah, that was my wrist. What? We'll edit that out. Uh, I'm looking at my wrist. man on well, my right now, and I'm hoping to God that there's a TV show coming. Like, I think that would be a really good TV show. But only the uh, Graham Morrison Animal Man, because he is our Lord and Savior. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that I, true. I, the official I, man of the Phantom Zone is Graham Morrison. That's right. As much as people like to tell me, no. Final Crisis was great. My animal man is Jeff Lemire, so uh, I'd, I'd rather... A, you know what? I'll give, I'll give you that one, too, because it's yeah. pretty much all good. Like, but he's still a dick. <laughs> True. Ooh, Jeff, Jeff, Lemire, Jeff Lemire. Oh, yeah. For, yeah. I mean, if, if your reasoning is that he left Justice League... United after one arc, then yes, he is a dick. No, I'm uh, talking about how he's like as a person. People have said that he's that type of person. 
I believe you. A lot of people in comics are dicks, from what I know. Uh, yeah. Um, we keep on getting distracted from the actual episode that we're talking about. Um, uh, they leave. Well, first they had they leave in uh, nineteen forty two, and then Nate notices that he doesn't have the dog tags. Then they go back to to nineteen forty two, and, and find out yeah. that the JSA that they were going to leave the JSA to die. Yeah, yeah which the real why, which which was which led to the whole. Uh, um, Vixen, Ray Palmer stuff. Yeah. I guess the real, um, the real through line in this episode is, uh, Citizen Steel and his grandson. Uh, the... No, 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 Commander the... Steel. Commander Steel. Citizen and Steel is Nate. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's, that's the real connecting fiber of this episode. Their relationship and, uh, Nate's realizing uh, that he doesn't necessarily need to be a soldier to be a hero and all that stuff and the stuff with him and Katie Lotz and her realizing he has a hemophilia and all that stuff and it's I think it's really well done uh, this is a character that I knew nothing about and I really want to see what happens to him now I really want to know how this develops so did uh, he get powers from that serum yeah yeah that's trailers yeah he's <laughs> He's invulnerable now, or at least oh. that's what it seemed. They didn't go like full metal, like armor, but it, they got close. In the about ju- all the CG in the Just Society you know. of America comics from that the started in like oh six oh seven. He uh, is mainly his his limbs and stuff that turned mm-hmm. that, be- that became steel. His face yeah. and stuff still was it was still flesh. Oh okay. But they're not doing the whole. He has a meta gene because his grandfather was a meta. No, his yeah. grandfather was a meta. Wasn't a meta in this. And it took yeah. me just now to realize that that black guy is Doctor Midnight, which I feel ashamed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was pretty obvious, Ellen. <laughs> and then you have Obsidian too. Don't forget Obsidian. Where is Alan Scott? If they have Obsidian, that means he exists. He's somewhere. That, that's because that's because they're saving that for the Green Lantern show. That's never happening. Also, no, they fate is everywhere. Here's the thing: they've set up alien Green Lantern, so I don't think they want to do magic Green Lantern. Because in the books, you can do that and not be as confusing, because you can explain that really well. But in a TV show, if you have two different versions of the same thing, that gets kind of convoluted and hard to explain to normie audiences. Yeah, so, idiots. So you're going to have to choose one, Magic Green Lantern or Alien Green Lantern, and they've already set up Alien Green Lantern. So if we're going to see one, it's going to be that one. It's going to be in Supergirl too. Probably. Or it's going to be in Flash, because that's where all those how uh, clues have been dropped. The CW-verse is basically like the perfect setups for backdoor pilots. Yep. So, like, that's why every time a new character shows up, I'm like, well, he's probably getting a spit off. Yeah. Like, but, when, once Blue Beetle shows up, he's going to get a spit off. Oh, yeah, man, I gonna... cannot wait for that. Well, uh, yeah. Like, I'll watch been, that. They've been... Only if it's the with... recent Blue Beetle with Ted Cord and Dr. Fate. Hmm, maybe. I don't know. All I know is that they've been setting up Cord Industries since episode one of Arrow. So... Oh, I forgot they can use Ted Cord because he's doing he's gonna be gonna be in the bo- the Booster Gold movie. That, yeah, uh, Berlant- Berlanti and Kreisberg are doing. That might not go through, but yeah. No, it's officially happening. <laughs> Until I hear uh, actors have been cast and it's in production, it, I don't. It has a writer. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it was written. Literally, it's going to be written by Zach Stentz of Flash, the Runaway Dinosaur fame. Hey, Alan, let me put let me put it this way, Alan. That Jack Black Green Lantern movie had a writer. 
Yep. Yeah. And there was a Wonder Woman movie written by Joss Whedon. And it yep. was even, it, it was supposedly going to happen. So, I forget uh, Superman Lives with Nick Cage. That Those actually all writers. almost made it to production. And uh, let's didn't. not talk about that because that's uh, there's Supergirl stuff happening that is related to that soon. Oh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with the... Okay, we... The giant spider? Off track. Uh, the Planetarian Snare Beast? No. Yeah, Planetarian Snare Beast. Okay, anyway. back onto the Legends train. Um, yeah, Citizen Seal, through line of the episode, blah, 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 blah. Really cool. I really liked it. I really liked that moment where it's, where he's talking to him and he's telling him you know what it means to be a hero. That was really a really nice moment. Um, another really big moment is um, after Stein has fucked everything up and... He realizes that he's maybe not the best guy to be the leader. He's maybe too pensive and too um, too in his own head to make actual decisions uh, that are decisive. That he decides to give uh, the canary the leadership role. Um, well, he says you don't give a theorist a uh, I'll, you don't make a theorist a leader. Yep. And, and there he mentioned Rip and the how he. How his reverence to him, how he was able to make decisions with such a such a tough crew, like crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a really good moment when she gets to become the leader. Um, and I, it really works well, and I love the look in her face when she looks at our man. Like, yeah, now I'm in charge, bitch. Um, <laughs> I liked it a lot. What did you guys think of her taking the leadership position? Well, I already knew that was going to happen based off episode uh, one Episode one of this season when sh- she's like, we got this. Yeah. And when... When someone says we got this in a comic book, yeah, they're someone of in, integral. They're integral. Yeah, it's, I don't know why she didn't step up in the first place. Because, I mean, because it was it was the, it was the era. It was the forties. Women were yeah. weren't really. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean on the ship. Yeah, I think she just because there was it was just. Her, Firestorm, Ray, yeah. and uh, Rory. She's never been the leader before of anything. I, like she's always been sort of second, second in command, sort of a, a backup person. I'm she's the sure G of the Arrowverse. Yeah, I'm sure even in the League of Assassins, Nisa was probably the leader, and she was the you know, the second in command. She's never done that, so her natural. Uh, implication or intonation intonation wasn't to say I'm going to be the leader it was to put somebody else in that role and I think so far she's done a pretty good job of being the leader Um, two okay so one really big moment was uh, the ending with uh, our man which before we get there let's talk can we talk about what what happened back in 2016 the deleted scene that we never saw? The, uh, Our Man Dissolving? Yeah. Yeah, that was a really interesting bit. Uh, uh, and it definitely supports my theory that Rip is not dead, uh, because the look on his face makes me assume that he planned on all of this, that this is all part of some bigger thing that he's been doing uh he probably traveled back in time at some point or forward in time in his own timeline to see what was going to happen or something well they read uh, an ew or, or an ew like one of those michael Ocello to, to the fans or like or uh-huh. what's happening on these select shows 
there was one for Legends of Tomorrow, and Kreisberg said that the viewers are going to find out what happened, what happened to Rip before the Legends. Yeah. Which is something that they do a lot on these shows. You find out things before the main character does all the time. And also, you kind of got got the feeling that Sarah was going to become the de facto captain when could do, in the episode opening. Like, my name is Sarah Lance. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if that's... I mean, yes, it does correlate, but I feel like every episode they're going to switch off who does the opening. I might be wrong about that, but that's my guess at this point. Because uh, they didn't open with Rip. They opened with Martin last week. So I assume next week will probably be Jax or... I uh, I don't know. It, it'll probably be Jax. I, for some reason, I feel like Jax is the next person to do. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be interesting next week. Um, anything else you need to talk about... Well, Legends, other than that ending with Our Man. Because that sets a lot of stuff up. It sets up how Vixen is going to be a regular, because she's probably going to contact the Legends and join the crew. Um, yeah, anything else anybody wants to bring up? Um, not really. All right. Um... So yeah, how, I thought that they uh, that the death of Rex Tyler was kind of shocking, uh, I, and I, I I really liked the moment. Um, Eobard was scary as usual, um, terrifying almost. Yeah, that that vibrating face thing is very unsettling. Yeah, and uh, that device things that clearly has some sort of implication on the larger season storyline well uh, la- when the legends of tomorrow when they had the season finale last year or this year back when it happened when they were talking about season two they said that you were going to be it's not i don't think it's it's there's a bigger play. There's a bigger player than just these four villains teaming together. Yeah. And their <laughs> their words for the season for the, the season two villain was was gonna make you say, "Vandal who?" Yeah, I believe it. I I think they're setting up something big. I don't want to say it's not gonna be like Dark Side or anything, but. It's... I feel Maybe like someone... it's no, but it's gonna be in the same league as that. Like it's gonna be something big. It's gotta be something big. I would lose my shit if they said it was High Father. Uh, Even though it would be completely incorrect. Yeah, really. <laughs> but... They're just assholes about it. They're just, yeah, it's High Father now. He's the villain now. Fuck it. Yeah, I they don't could. Know. I don't... Hey, if you saw Just League Gods and Monsters. That's yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, because they're already... They're doing the Dominators for the crossover. So, they're definitely open to more alien villains. Uh, I don't know. I I feel like... I feel like we... Once we realize what they're going to do, and once we start to get the real juicy hints, we'll freak out and be like, of course this is what they were going to do. What else were they yeah. going to do? It's but... Dog Welder. <laughs> yeah. Dog God. Welder and Six Pack traveling through time. Hard traveling heroes. Hard traveling time heroes. <laughs> yeah, but I think... Now definitely... that should be the, ep- the title of, of this episode. Yeah. Um, I think definitely it's going to be someone big.
And that concludes this week's edition of the Phantom Zone podcast. Don't forget to join us next week on October 31st for a whole episode dedicated to Spawn, the 1992 classic starring Michael J. White and Joe Legazamo, as well as email your questions into zonersgroup at gmail.com. We will read them on the show eventually once we have some good ones. And don't forget to join the Facebook group. Just type in uh, the Phantom Zone and should pop right up. Till next time, excelsior and don't walk in front of cars. (laughs) 